On Classic Man, I talk about things that I believe help a man develop charm and character. And this story is one that caused me to develop a lot of character, um, whether or not I was ready for it. It's the story of how I lost my fingers in a tragic work accident. And it's, it's not a gimmick. This is really what my fingers look like. I'm missing parts of a lot of them. <laughs> um, but yeah, I should give a little context about where I was and what led to that. Several years ago, I went to work for a company that sold fleet and industrial supplies. I was hired on as a field service rep. My job was to drive the, the great big box truck and unload all the pallets, take all the supplies and parts and things out and put them away where they went at a customer's account. Another part of my job was to service the machines that we had leased. In this case, it was a hydraulic crimping machine. I had been at the company for about a year and a half and I had my sights set on getting promoted into um, an outside sales position or an, account, or an account manager role. I wanted to earn more for the company, but I, I really wanted to do more and bring more home to my family. So about a year and a half after I'd started, we'd hired another guy and I was gonna train him to do what I did so that I'd have the opportunity to move up. And this was actually his first trip. Um, so we go six hours away from our headquarters because we had a great big account out there and, and it made sense to do it. They spent a lot of money with us. <clears throat> so we drive six hours out there and we're on our second day of work and uh, I go and service the crimping machine. I had serviced the crimping machine nearly every trip I'd gone out there and I was going out there once or twice a week easy. I just needed to make sure that it was calibrated correctly so that they were able to put their fittings on their hoses and know that they were crimped to spec. So I was just um, running some measurements and tests on the machines and trading out the die cages um, that got pressed into a crimp ring and I was actually on the very last one and got everything tested, got everything lubricated, and I went to grab the die cage and pull it off of the end of the cylinder. And when I did, I leaned forward and the tip of my boot engaged the foot switch that operated the cylinder. I'd done it so many times that I never thought anything like that would happen. When the tip of my boot hit the switch on the machine, at first I didn't know what was going on. I was confused why the machine was moving, but the cylinder engaged and it crushed my fingers that were in its way. I tried to stop it, but I couldn't manage to get the machine to stop. There I was with my hand caught in this incredibly powerful machine, and the noises I heard and the things that I felt, I knew something very bad had just happened, and the only thing that I felt was panic. I was overwhelmed because I didn't know how bad it was. After all, I had a glove on and it felt horrible and it sounded even worse, but I just reached down with my other hand and hit retract and I pulled my hand out of the machine and I grabbed it with my other hand, kind of a makeshift tourniquet, right? And I thought, oh no, I need to call 911 because there was no one else around me. So I dialed 911, I got my phone in my ear and I'm trying to keep my hand from bleeding all over the place and I'm walking around the building trying to find someone at this location that could give me help if I needed it. And I walked around the building and I sat down in their parts and receiving room. And they, I ran into uh, Emilio and Emilio goes, hey, hey, are you okay? I said, what's the number on this building I'm on the phone with 911? I think I might've just passed the phone to him. I don't remember, but I was given a chair. The, uh, the maintenance manager that day came in there and he said, bro, are you okay? And I said, no, I'm not. I still didn't know. I was just freaked out. I didn't know if I'd messed up my job. I didn't know how badly I might have injured my hand. I was just scared. I was just absolutely panicked and fear was the number one thing that I felt. A couple of the guys tried to make a tourniquet out of some some rags or something they had in the shop to try to get it um, to try to keep the blood from flowing. I still had a glove on. I didn't know how bad it was. And I remember um, the maintenance manager asking me, he said, hey, you want to take that glove off so we can take a look at it? And I said, no, I don't. He said, it's that bad, huh? I said, I heard crunching. And he goes, all right, well, the ambulance will be here soon. You just relax. And I did, and it wasn't just a few minutes that the ambulance showed up. And when the ambulance got there, I'm not, I'm not lying. 
I got up out of my chair and started walking toward that ambulance. The paramedic said, whoa, dude, you got to slow down. I said, no, get in that ambulance because y'all are going to give me some medicine to make me feel better before I lose my mind, right? And uh, they kind of chuckled and they're like, okay, this guy's hurt, but you know, he's okay. And um, they get me in the ambulance and I tell them, I say, hey, look, my hand got caught in a hydraulic crimper. It's mangled. I don't know how bad because I've got this glove on and I, I, I can't see it, but I'm telling you right now, it was not a good situation. They said, okay. So they said, so you do have trauma? I said, absolutely. They said, okay, we're gonna get you some medicine to help your life and help you feel better. I said, thank God. So they said, hang tight. Let's. Let's see if we can cut that glove and find out what's going on in there. And not to focus on how graphic it was, but it was bad. Um, as you can see in these pictures here, um, things were <laughs> things were messed up and uh, it was bad. And so they said, all right, I'm going to the hospital. So we're headed to the hospital. I use my other hand to call my wife. And I say, hey, um, I hurt my hand at work. And it's pretty bad. And she goes, oh yeah? Um, she thought I was pulling her leg. I said, no, it's it's bad. I don't know how bad, but I know that I'm at least gonna have surgery on my fingers and I'm not sure that I actually can keep all of my fingers. It's so damaged. And I heard her get real quiet. She said, okay, what can I do? I said, nothing. I mean, you know, pray for me and the doctors, but um, I'll let you know what they say. She said, okay, please keep me posted. I said, I can only communicate so much, but yes. So we go to the hospital and they pull me in and they take a look at it and the ER trauma surgeon comes in and he goes, you're probably gonna lose those fingers before they got hurt. And I said, like all of them? He goes, at least the middle two, the end of that one, which all makes sense. He goes, you're gonna lose these two, probably the end of that one. He goes, I'm not sure about this one. He said, I recommend sending you back to Dallas. That is where I'm from, but it is six hours away. So they run tests on me, they do x-rays, they go, yeah, your hand is mangled. Uh, you need a hand specialty surgeon team and they're in Dallas. That's why he wanted to send me back close to my house. I was like, okay, well, I guess put me in a helicopter, let's go, right? And they said, we talked to Careflight and unfortunately, um, there's a lot of storms in the way and our best bet, honestly, I-20 is a long, straight road. We're, we're just going to get you an ambulance. We're going to get you back to Dallas as quick as possible. So get in the ambulance. And at, at this point, they had me doped up pretty good. I was still cognizant, but I wasn't hurting that bad. <laughs> I'm dumb. And I posted, um, posted funny memes about losing my fingers um, to Facebook. And then some dear friends of mine whom I love chimed in on the phone and it helped me a little bit just to laugh about it because it was so overwhelming that I wasn't sure what else to do but I go all the way to Dallas the time frame has been like this I got hurt about 11 a.m. I got to Dallas around 10 p.m. when I get to Dallas my wife and my mom are actually waiting at uh, Parkland Hospital for me I told them what had happened and I said look I think I just got to go under surgery with the hand team and um, and see what they can salvage. So I went into surgery about 1 a.m. I guess around, I don't know, 4 or 5. They uh, roll me back to my room and, and it's all ready to rock. And I've got it all, my hand's all bandaged up. I can't see anything. I don't know what's under there. Except I do see two plastic yellow um, balls on the end of these two pens sticking out of the end of my index finger, which told me that they put it back together as best as they could but I at least kept the length of the index finger which was a big deal so they actually sent me home I don't know if anybody else has lost fingers but it's very painful there's a nerve on each side of each finger and seven of those were severed in this injury and they sent me home with um, inadequate pain medication I'll put it that way there's a, there's a big discussion about opioids, I understand, but they didn't give me good medication. And the next day at home, a day after having my fingers amputated, I was in huge pain. I mean, big pain. Pain that would keep me awake. I had to go to the ER in my city and tell them what had happened. They just looked at me and they're like, I, we don't know what to do for you. And I was like, I need 
I need pain medic. I, I'm I'm in I'm in pain. I need help. And I showed them like I was like if I could take all this gauze and wrapping off, I would show you why I'm in pain. But I need you. I'm just pacing back and forth in this ER in my town, and they're just looking at me wild, like oh, we don't know what to do with them. One trauma surgeon had mercy on me, and he said, "Look, I can't get into the project or maintenance of of another doctor and their team's surgery, but I can." give you a dose of medication. I can't prescribe you anything, but I can treat your pain right here if that'll help. He gave me a shot. It did help me relax. I got some sleep, slept through the night. And the next day, I just had to ask family for any medication they had. They rounded up enough uh, medicine to help me stay calm and get some rest. But it was in the next few days that I realized I really messed up. My hand's never gonna be the same again. Will I be able to pick up my kids, will I be able to write, type, cook, to, to do anything, hobbies, can I still work, um, can I still do any woodworking, can I still work, do mechanic type work, and I just didn't know there were so many things unanswered and my hand was in such pain that after all the adrenaline had worn off, I just felt like absolute trash that I'd made such a colossally stupid decision. If I'd known that was going to be the outcome, I wouldn't have done it. If I had known that this was irreversible, I would have changed the way I approached it. But I'd done it so many times that I was desensitized to the danger. I'd done it so many times and I was trying to get so many things accomplished that day that I made a mistake. And that's that. I really had to wrestle with that. But there was something else cool that was happening. My wife grew in compassion for me like I've never seen in my life. I was in a position where I needed help, where I needed someone to serve me and help me work through some things. And that's not comfortable or easy to do. The very morning that they were about to release me from the hospital, three other account managers from the office showed up. They wanted to make sure I was okay. They were knocking each other over to try to get to me to encourage me and say, you don't need to worry about anything. My boss, Casey, he said, no, 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 you focus on getting better. And they all said really kind things to me to encourage me and help me. And so I'm sitting here at home, being waited on, being in pain, and processing through this stuff. And I thought, man, I'm so dumb. I wanted so badly to move up in this company. And here I am making one of the dumbest mistakes. I was training a guy, and what if I gotten him hurt? And I thought, I don't know if I'm even cut out for this type of work. I don't know if I'm cut out to accomplish these kind of things. And I was talking with Casey about it. And he said, you have two choices. You can wallow in this and try to treat the pain with pity, or you can face it and say, look, I made a mistake and it changed things a lot for me, but I am going to use that as my superpower. And I kind of got quiet for a minute. I was like, what does that mean? And he goes, for the rest of your life, you can almost always look to your left and to your right, whether you are um, standing in line at the bank or at the grocery store checkout line, you will know what can happen in an instant. You will have it have a sharpened sense and an acute awareness of what can happen in a matter of split seconds in one brief moment of carelessness. And it goes, so you can let that eat you up or you can make it your superpower. I thought, okay, that makes sense. So I stayed home for a few weeks. Um, just rested and <laughs> dealt with these pins sticking out of the end of my finger and let my wife serve me, which was not necessarily comfortable, but it was really helpful for me. And I had to grow in that. I had to be okay with that. I had to be okay with the fact that I made a mistake that, that changed my body and my life. And I grew in that. And I went back to work. And that kept me in the office for a long time. And I wrestled with, is this where I need to be? I can't believe I did that. And they just said, 
no, we're going to work at this. You're going to learn programs. You're going to write some SOP for that machine. And you're going to come up with a plan on how we keep this from happening to someone else in the future. And I said, <laughs> okay. I wasn't really mentally prepared for that, but that's exactly what we did. And it worked out exactly the way it was supposed to. I wrote new standard operating procedures for how that company operates those machines. Um, all the other people at work came up with stuff to, to put into that policy to keep people from getting hurt again. I forgot to mention that within a day or so of uh, getting home, I got this gigantic card um, with a gift certificate for like door delivered meals and um, everybody at the company had signed it. And I was getting emails, texts, and phone calls. Like any other scenario I would have been exhausted by, but every one of them was just encouraging me, telling me, hey, we're praying for you. Hey, you're gonna get it better, keep your head up, like all this stuff. And I was like, holy cow. I had been beating myself up and convincing myself that I wasn't worth doing what I was doing, doing what I was good at. And there were all these people speaking against that for me and really trying to uplift me and encourage me. And it was the coolest thing ever. At that was one of the coolest companies that I ever worked for just because of that atmosphere. I went back to work in a few weeks and I started writing SOPs and we got that situation reversed and I answered a lot of questions and I wound up training people how to use that machine. And trust me, when you stand in front of a class and say, hey, I'm here to tell you about the crimper and they know what the story is, they're just like, seriously, this is the dude that's teaching us the class. I'll get the Snickers and I'll get the appalled looks on people's faces. But the reality was this, they would look at me and I'd say, hey, I get it. You guys know who I am. I am very aware of what this machine can do. So I would take it from me how it works, all right? And it always smoothed it over. And so I taught these classes and, um, and I moved on. And within a couple of months, I received an offer letter to be promoted. And I was like, what? And my manager, Casey, he goes, no, you've earned it. He goes, you earned it before you got hurt. He goes, I probably would have had you there sooner had you not got hurt. I was like, really? He goes, yeah. Yeah, we just needed to train somebody to replace you. You were the perfect person to train them, and then something awful happened. But you've recovered. You've got this stuff nailed down. He goes, I'm ready to train you so you can move up and make some more money for us and for your family. And I was just like, <laughs> okay. Just because you lose something doesn't mean it's the end of everything. In fact, all the things I was worried about, how do I write, how do I type, how do I do? You know what? I do most of it. I, uh, I type and sometimes make typos. I write and my handwriting wasn't great before and sometimes it needs work and that's okay. Um, I was scared to death to shake customers hands because I was in sales I was supposed to establish relationships and uh, understand what their needs were and, and all this stuff and handshakes are a big part of that and I was scared to death to meet new people because uh, I'm looking at my hand going that's got to be weird to shake and most of the time it's not hardly anyone notices and I talk with my hands when I'm out in public and everything so um, but all the fears and all the panic from that moment to today most of that fear was conjured. There was trauma, normal response. But me beating myself up and me limiting what my future can be for me because I thought maybe I'm not cut out for this. Maybe I'm so dumb. Maybe if I make such a bad mistake like that, then maybe I can't do such and such. And that's just not the case. I moved up. I did real successfully there. Just because you lose something doesn't mean you've died. Just because you have setbacks doesn't mean you're duped. And my encouragement to everyone is that if you find yourself in a position where you have lost something, where you've broken something, where you've limited yourself temporarily because you made a bad mistake, hey, own it and move on with life. Let the people around you care for you and set your sight on the future and do not let fears drag you down and hold you back. Otherwise, you could be just a walking pity party that never gets anything accomplished, or you could face your failures head on and pioneer a new way to be successful in life. Nothing went the way I feared it would. Um, I got better. So I don't have fingers. It's not the end of me. 
maybe you clicked on this video because you have a similar story. Maybe you've lost something or maybe you're thinking, man, what's recovery going to look like? I can't guarantee every outcome for you, but I can give you this. Setbacks and failures don't kill who you are. Only you can do that to yourself. When you have tragic things happen in life, take them head on, grieve and grow so that you can develop that character that you need in all the other aspects of your life. If you have had a similar experience, let me know what it's like in the comment section. Let me know if this has been encouraging to you because I actually didn't find that many stories like this to kind of help me through the process. And that's kind of why I made this one. So thank you guys for tuning in.